This is the app that gets created whenever you create a new Flutter project. This is a very simple app but it follows the material design guidelines. So here we have this floating action button. We have a material design app bar and we have two text. The first is displaying a message and the second is displaying a number. This number represents the number of times this floating action button is clicked. Whenever you click on the button, this value gets incremented by 1. Now if we take a look inside the code of this project, we can see that there are multiple files and folders here. But don't get overwhelmed by all of this. For now, we are going to focus only on this folder lib and this file pubspec.yml. This lib folder is the place where we are going to write all our code. And this file pubspec.yml is kind of a configuration file. This is mainly used to manage the dependencies and the resources required for this app. Now here we can see that in our default project, Inside this leaf folder, we have only one file, main.dart, and this file is responsible for the complete app. So let us explore the code inside this file. First of all, let us remove these comments to make our code a little more clear. Now let us try to understand the code by dividing it into three parts. First is the main function. This is the entry point for the program. This is where the execution starts. Without a main function, we won't be able to run our app. And this arrow syntax here is equivalent to writing the following statement inside braces. Inside this main function, we are calling another function called runapp. This function needs a parameter which is of type widget. So what is a widget? A widget is the building block of every app created in Flutter. You have to compose different widgets to create a Flutter app. If you want to display a text, you have to use a text widget. If you want to display a button, you can use one of the many available widgets for buttons or you can create your own widgets. If you want to provide a complete material design experience to the user, you can use the convenience we get called material app, which we are going to use. So basically everything is a widget in Flutter. And this function run app takes a widget as a parameter and it fits the widget in the complete screen. So if we pass a text widget here, it will display the text in the complete screen. Now if we want to place the text at the center, we can wrap this text we get inside another we get called center. But we want to display a complete app instead of this text, right? And for that we are going to use the convenience we get called material app. So let us replace this widgets with a material app we get. And let us pass the text we get to the property home of this material app. Now if we run the app, we have the same text but it looks a little different. But again, this is not what we want, right? To create a material design app, we have to use some other widgets too along with the material app widget. One of them is a scaffold. A scaffold helps us in creating some of the common material design elements like an app bar, a navigation drawer, a bottom sheet, or a snack bar. So let us add a scaffold to the property home of this material app. And let us add an app bar we get to the scaffold. And let us provide the text we get to the property body of the scaffold. And now if we run the app, we have something that looks like an app now. Now coming to the second part, we have a stateless widget called my app. To organize the code a little better, instead of passing the material app widget directly to the runner function, we can create a separate widget and then pass this widget to the runner function. And this is what this my app widget is for in the default code. So let us pass an instance of this widget my app to the runner again. 
So we have seen that everything is a widget in Flutter. We have used a text widget to display a text. We have used a widget center to position the text at the center of the screen. We have used a widget material app, a scaffold to create the basic structure for a material design app. And we have created our own widget for our convenience. And we are going to explore more and more widgets as we proceed with our project. Now while creating the widget my app, have you noticed that we are extending a class called stateless widget. So what is a stateless widget? In Flutter there are mainly two types of widgets, stateless widgets and stateful widgets. A stateful widget is used when we want to change the UI dynamically. But if there is nothing to change on the UI dynamically then a stateless widget is the best option. So in the default code there is nothing to change in the properties of the material app widget itself. Thus it extends stateless widget. An alternative situation can be imagined where we would like to change the color of the app every minute dynamically then extending a stateful widget would have make some sense. A stateless widget must implement the build method which represents the UI of the widget. This build method is called by the framework and it returns the widget that represents the UI. Here in our code an instance of a material app widget is returned from this build method and values have been provided to three of the many properties of the material app. First is the title which is used by the device. Second is the theme. If you change the primary swatch property of theme data here, then the color scheme of the whole app will change. And finally, home. This is where we have to provide the widget representing the first screen of our app. Again, a new widget has been created and used to represent the home page or in this app, the only page. We are also passing a title to this new widget, my home page. Now let us come to the third part, the stateful widget my homepage. This widget has an associated state class, my homepage state. So why is my homepage stateful? And the answer is because we are going to make changes to the UI dynamically. Whenever the user clicks on this floating action button, the number of times that this button has been clicked will be displayed here. Every time the button is clicked, the counter will increment and the new value will be displayed in this text widget. A stateful widget must have a state associated with it. A state has to be defined separately by creating a class that extends this state class. Unlike stateless widgets, the build function responsible for drawing the UI is not inside the widget class. Instead, it is inside the state class. Inside my home page class, we have to implement the function create state and we will return an instance of the state class from here. This function is called by the framework to associate the state with the widget. We will write all our UI code here inside this build function as usual, but this time we will also have some logic to update the UI dynamically. And the logic here is pretty simple in this demo app. We have an integer counter which will be incremented by 1 every time this floating action button is clicked and the value of this variable is displayed in the second text widget. We have a few new widgets here. Let us explore them one by one. First at the root here we have a scaffold widget. A scaffold makes it easier to add the common material design elements to the app. For example, to add an app bar, a snack bar, a navigation drawer or a bottom sheet, we just have to provide the proper widget to the corresponding property of scaffold. For example, here we are providing an app bar widget to this property app bar to display a material design app bar here. And we don't have to worry about the material design specifications. This will be taken care of automatically. Just provide the values for the properties that we need to configure. Here we are providing a text widget for the title. Now what is this widget.title? 
Wigate is a reference to the stateful widget to which the state belongs. My home page in this case. And my home page has a property title that is initialized by the constructor. We are passing a string while creating an instance of this widget. And this field title can be accessed from the state class with help of the widget reference. Next, we have a center. We have already used this widget. It positions a widget at the center of its parent. Then we have a column. A column takes a list of widgets as its children and organizes them vertically. You can notice that we have a property children instead of child here that takes a list of widgets. In Dart, you can create a list by enclosing comma separated items inside square brackets. Two text widgets are passed here, one for the message and the other for the counter. The horizontal counter part for a column widget is a row which takes a list of widgets as the children and organizes them horizontally. Next we have a floating action button. This widget is used to create a floating action button as the name suggests. Here we are passing three values to the constructor of floating action button. First is on pressed, which is a callback function that is called whenever the button is pressed. A function is created to increment the counter variable by one. On pressing the floating action button, this function is called and the value of the variable is incremented by one. Next we have tooltip. Just press and hold this floating action button for a while and you will see this text appears. And this is tooltip. Next we have child and an icon we get is being passed here to display this plus icon inside the button. It takes an icon data as a parameter. An icon data describes an icon. But what is this icons dot add then? Icons is a class that comes inbuilt with the framework that contains icon data for common material design icons and add is one of them. Just type icons and a dot and the ID should show you the list of available icons. Now let us come back to the increment counter method. Here you can see that the counter variable is incremented inside the set state method. So what is set state? Calling set state is a way to tell Flutter that something has been changed and the UI needs to be rebuilt. The framework will call the build function of the state again, which will redraw the UI. If you don't call this function even after changing the value of counter, the UI will be showing zero itself. Here you can see that I have removed the call to set state, but I am still incrementing the value of the variable counter. And I am adding this print statement so that we can see the latest value of this variable in the console. Now let us take a look at the app. And here if we click on the floating action button, the value is getting incremented and we can see the actual value in the console but in the UI it is still showing zero because we have not called set state thus Flutter does not know that some changes has been made and it needs to rebuild the UI. So whenever we need to make any changes to the UI we have to call set state. 